Welcome back Hi. to another episode. Thank you for joining us. Yes, I'm Chanel. And I'm Chanel. And this is Chanel and Chanel, where book talk meets culture. Yes, where well, our mission is to share accessible, culturally relevant, and engaging books for readers that are either struggling or reluctant to read. Yep. Like always, here's another great book. Today we have What is Given from the Heart. Yes. This is a, such a cute and adorable book. I yes, feel so warm and fuzzy inside reading it. Yeah. It's just one of those. So it's about a boy <laughs> named James Otis and his family. They had a really tough year, hard time. You know, dad passed away and they're struggling. They're, they, they just basically say, we're poor, basically. Um, and he goes to church one day and they said, hey, this is going to be, um, we have to create love boxes again. Um, and, and there's a family that loses everything in a fire and the little boy has to think of a gift to, to give, give to a little girl in his church. And the challenge is, he's like, what do I give this little girl? He's, the girl's like seven, he's nine, I think. What do I give? So he starts thinking about all the things he needs, he would like to give her that he has. I mean, he keeps thinking, I don't even have for myself. How am I going to give to someone else? Exactly. And he just goes throughout the book. He just, you just go through this process of him trying to think about different, coming up with different ideas until finally he finds something, which I'm not going to say what it is. Yeah, <laughs> but he, he goes through thinking, the thinking process of like, I have like a box of crayons, but those crayons are missing too. So I can't give her that. Right. Like he's thinking like, I'm thinking about giving her my lucky pencil, but it's down to the stub mm, and the eraser is going. Wrong. Can't give her that. that. Yeah. Like he has nothing that he can physically, tangibly give himself. himself. He's actually in the same situation that this little girl is in, but his mother teaches him like, and, and through his community, they learn that what's given from the heart is received See, from the heart. heart. Is received by the heart. heart. Yes. Yeah. So you're teaching, he's, he's learning in essence that sometimes it's just not, giving not, yeah but it's not what you give it's how you give, give. It. so he's giving it's not that it's not about what tangibly he's giving it's the heartfelt behind the giving and i felt like the lesson in this story is just so beautiful mm -hmm. because especially in a time in a season where there's a lot of gift giving and a lot of sharing and you know thanksgiving of you know different things it's like how are you going to give? Like people go out all these means to get all these expensive gifts and expensive mm -hmm. toys. And it shouldn't be about the tangible gift. It should be about uh, giving a heartfelt gift, a thoughtful gift, you mm -hmm. know? Like uh, Maya Angelou has, a, it has a, a quote from Maya Angelou. She says, people won't remember uh, what you said. They won't remember what you did. But they would always remember how you made them feel. Yes. And this book reminds me of that. I think it's such an important lesson for kids to learn as from a young age that they should be thoughtful in their giving. They should. I love givers. I love, I love to give. So I feel like everyone should be a giver, like yes. in a sense. Like they should give and they should give thoughtfully. Yes. And if you raise givers, they will, I mean, you know, introduce it to them now, they'll probably be givers later. later. Yes. Yes. This book, why, what really resonated with me is that we are in a season coming out of a season in which was a very hard year for everybody globally mm -hmm. with the pandemic. And there's still families that are trying to recover financially, socially, emotionally from it um, with the experience of loss and grief of loved ones. And also, again, you know, holiday seasons and, you know, giving and financially, maybe families don't have it. Right. Let's just say everybody doesn't have it. But thinking about giving and the gift of giving beyond the tangible. In the story, the mom actually gives her best tablecloth to make a gift for someone else, right. you know? So it's like, we don't have, but we're going to say, look, we have our life. We have happiness. We're happy together. So mm -hmm. it doesn't really say, hey, we're poor and we're going to be unhappy. We're not going to be happy with what we have. But let's just see, like, in what we have, what more can we give to bless someone else? Yep. So I think that was, like, an amazing part of the book. It's so hard. For You're like, oh, and just... It's yeah. so sweet. It makes you feel like so, all fuzzy inside. Yeah, let's see if this book is ace. <laughs> yes. So is it accessible? So I believe this book was targeted for ages maybe four to eight years old. It is a lower read book, meaning that it should be accessible to your typical second grade reader. It's a book for all kids, though, because it has a very important lesson in the book. What I do think may be a little challenging is that the book is written with a sudden accent. So it's written with like sudden language. So it has a sudden accent in it. 
which is like it could be challenging if kids are not used to reading it they might have a hard time reading it they might stumble over it but i think also the beauty of it is that a lot of times the kids speak this way but they don't get the opportunity to read um mm -hmm. their, their accent in print mm -hmm. so i think that's something that could be celebrated so a lot of times we speak a dialect but we don't get to read the dialect because yeah. we read we speak english but a lot of kids don't get to read their own dialect so i think that's very like i think that's cool that yeah. they get the opportunity to see their dialect and in print something again uh, uh, also with that is that it's not throughout the book which is like how we speak not everyone's speaking colloquialism or you know within with the dialect yeah 24 7 right sometimes books take it to the extreme where it's so consistent it's like every other word mm -hmm. and then in this book it's going off and on right almost like so, when he's when it, in his thought process there is there is uh just this what we call standard english but when he's communicating with people in his community then he uses the dialogue which is pretty like typical some level of code, code switching, switching yes. yes which is pretty typical so i guess about how kids would communicate mm -hmm. or how we would communicate i think a, a, a fourth grader maybe that's really struggling with really reading this might be a, a good pace leveled book for them um but it's definitely probably at second grade a strong second grade, grade reading level. Yeah. Um, you see, if you have a strong reader in second grade, this book will probably be fine for them. Yep. But uh, I like it for all kids just because of the moral and the lesson that's this taught in this story. It, yeah. yep. um, cultural relevance. Now, not everyone culturally is in a financial place where their family is struggling or poor. But what it does, it does create an essence of community and oneness and beingness mm -hmm. and just looking out for someone else in need. Right. Like having compassion developing compassion for others but thinking about others more than you're thinking about yourselves right not always thinking like hey i gotta have the biggest and the best and i have to do i me 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 you could also think about how you can bless someone else right i think that yeah i agree with that when it comes to the culture and then like we said again the fact that they included a dialect other than standard american english is very cool culturally as well i think that's really important that we expose kids to the language that they speak and their dialect and they see that in print so that when they want to write their own stories they're not afraid to use their dialect in writing exactly which is something that a lot of educators don't even really encourage but it's something that i think it would be beneficial yep. for identity and self and worth in terms of language and culture so yeah. And engagement. I thought the book was engaging because throughout the entire book, at one point, I was just like, I don't even no, know no, what to give this, yeah. <laughs> give this little too. girl. Because I'm thinking like, he basically has like, like little, little, little to, to give, nothing. To so give, I'm like, yeah. I wonder what he's going to give her. And he, the author keeps you on your toes throughout. One thing I love about the book is the illustrations. Mm -hmm. And the illustrations, I, I hope people don't overlook it. It's actually like a collage. So like the illustrator has collage or strips of other pieces of papers or printing that make the print that's the print of the book. Yeah. And when I thought about it, even at a bigger hole, I'm like, isn't that what the community is doing, right? Everyone has a little piece of something, something that and they take up. pieces of it to create something else for someone else. else yeah. So they're creating these boxes of love that they're going to give to other families, but everyone's using a piece of what they have to, to make as a contribution. To make, yeah, to make a whole box. Yeah, to make a complete whole box. It's not only like, oh, I have to take on this mantle on my own, but the community comes together. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like taking a part of me to share with you. Yeah. This is a part of what is important, what I love, and you, I'm, giving, I'm having an opportunity to share that and give that to you in love and, and that's beautiful yeah there's a lot of million little like pieces that yeah, make a bigger that picture come together to make a and picture. The, cool. and you know the book has a very like mellow color scheme but in that collage is pockets of brightness right you know so it just reminded me like sometimes when people are like you might be living in you know poverty or whatnot or you may feel like you have less than and you or you might be in a season where you feel like oh this is a very mellow time or you know there are pockets of brightness and hope no, and, yeah. and, and, and things to encourage people there. So I think, like, I don't know if that was the illustrator's intent, Tense, yeah. but I felt like it did come across in the book. Like, even in our times where we may be low or do not have as much, there's those pockets of hope, hope and yeah. brightness and joy that we can find in between the lines, and we all have yeah. a little part that we can add to it. Yeah, and putting others up ahead of yourself, your own needs, and mm -hmm. looking out for the benefit of the others and sharing that love and that happiness with others i think is really mm -hmm. you know what makes the book come together what makes it really feeling fun engaging warm mm -hmm. um at the, at what i would really like to see is a challenge to challenge kids to give thoughtful gifts but also it's twofold to be able to receive a thoughtful gift so sometimes kids need to learn that 
the gifts don't always have to be the big grand day prize. It doesn't have to be the big expensive item, but to, to develop a sense of gratitude mm -hmm. um, and a sense of generosity from such a young age, making them be able to see from both lens, from both perspectives, mm, you know? That's a good point. It's good to give, it's, but it also, it, as much as it feels good to receive a gift, be appreciative for what you receive, but also be, opening, be open enough to give, you know? Yeah, so, so yeah. yeah. Because always, some people can't receive a gift. They'd be like, what is this? Oh, yeah, and then they're like, <laughs> over it, because it's not what they expected, <laughs> right? Yeah, you're right, right. So they're like, oh, I don't want to think I want this we one, want, or yeah. they're not as, but how to, um, yeah, I really like appreciate, that idea, yeah. how to appreciate Gifts that maybe, maybe they may not have, you know, accepted. Yeah, you know, sometimes yeah. you gotta pay attention. Like, Go tell whoever well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and the kids like, thank you. I can't believe you got me this. Like, this like, is socks. Socks again. <laughs> yeah, like you know. But to think about maybe the heart of the person Absolutely. when they brought the gift. For yeah, you. they thought so, of you. Yeah. yeah. So what is given from the heart is received from, from the heart. heart. And we would say what is given from the heart, heart is an aced a book. book. So, so thank you for watching. Until next, next time, time, continue to give. And give from the heart. Yeah. All right. See you soon. Bye. Bye.